can put this together and I'm just I'm substituting for Valerie but I am an attorney I've been an attorney in th for 30 years in Florida and I'm very and I've represented environmental groups over the years and I've gotten very interested in the abuse um, of mitigation lands which is becoming a more and more prevalent chronic situation um, you can change to the yeah, next one. So uh, we got all these different kinds of protections for public lands, including Gopher Tourist lands. We got the deed restrictions. We got mitigation, mitigation banks. We have land that is set aside as mitigation. Um, it's the agreement. I'll put this land in mitigation in order to get my permit from some agency be it a state agency, a local agency sometimes, or a federal agency. We have the conservation easements. We got the public ownership here in Florida. Um, you can change. Um, but you know what? It's not working in Florida. Our, our mitigation lands are not being protected. Our lands under conservation easement are not really protected. So. Forever seems to only mean until a new deal comes along. Um, I got interested in Split Oak because it's yet another example of the failure of land that is acquired with public money and is supposed to be put into protection in perpetuity. Well, the turnpike comes along or the DOT or somebody wants to put a road through it. And you know what? Politics seems to trump everything else. Um, so. Uh, as we said before, Split Oak uh, is partially in Orange County, partially in Osceola County. It was purchased to be to serve as sort of a mitigation bank um, with state money. It was supposed to be protected in perpetuity. It's full of gopher tortoises and other fabulous species. And now uh, an expressway authority wants to put a road through it basically to open that area up like a can opener for development. There's where they want to put it. You can scroll. They want to put it through Split Oak. Why? Because they don't want to have to go through eminent domain proceedings with landowners. It's cheaper and easier just to control the politics and put it through the public land. That's the reality. Okay, all these different alignments, they want to put it through Split Oak. That's the cheapest, easiest way. Um, and Valerie, up in Osceola County, she's the head of Friends of Split Oak. She's sat through all these meetings. Um, she's been, the Friends of Split Oak has been stymied. The developer um, is, well, the developer, who is the developer? Um, it's the state agencies. It's the, the huge landowner um, are trying to sort of greenwash this project. You know what I mean? Um, <coughs> And this is, um, oh, there's Tavistock is the developer. That's right. Um, <laughs> they own, they, they're land bankers. And they own this vast uh, acreage. And they need to put this road through to get their, their developments cranking uh, right there near the Orlando airport. Um, so I'm not going to go into this, but uh, Charles Lee has come out in favor of this alignment. He's supposedly the voice of, uh, of conservation in Florida. Um, there are very powerful interests that want this road to go through this, um, through this mitigation land. So, and that's why I'm interested in it because, you know, as I've often said to people, there's in Florida at least, land use is politics, okay? That's the number one rule. And this is, Split Oak is one example I've seen of a number of, of scenarios where mitigation land is not protected or respected. An example involves the Farmington Mitigation Bank, the biggest mitigation bank in the United States. It's about 30,000 acres in a larger, um, in a larger tract of about 60,000 acres owned by Miami Corporation, which acquired that acreage on the Volusia County, um, Brevard County line right there on 95, right? Uh, set it up as a mitigation bank, and apparently it's okay for them to just take land out of that mitigation bank 
and develop it. That's what a court just said. I was the attorney of record in that case. It's very discouraging, very discouraging. Um, I find out water management districts routinely release conservation easements when they're the grantee, okay? They do it almost every board meeting. Just so you know, it used, it used to be unlawful for them to do it. That law was repealed. That's what they're doing. Um, another example of powerful interests that want to put a road and won't stop. The Saranova parcel in Pasco County was mitigation land purchased by DOT to serve as, uh, as the deal, the mitigation, for construction of the Suncoast Parkway 1. Pasco wants to put a four to six lane highway through that. That, and they, they've had a permit application pending with the Army Corps of Engineers for 20 years, okay? And Pasco has spent millions of dollars trying to ram this road through. And I'm gonna tell you what I think is the only thing holding up the longest pending permit application in the history of the Army Corps. Um, oh, and my most recent example, Business Contractors Park, a 30 acre parcel in uh, Orlando, conservation easement was put on it 20, uh, 10 years ago uh, to serve as mitigation for destroying 17 acres of jurisdictional wetlands in the headwaters of the Little Bokaiba River. The deal was you put a conservation easement over it. St. John's River Water Management District just released that easement last year for the whole 30 acres. And now they're gonna turn it into an industrial park. Um, just to even make it more juicy, just FYI, the consultant for the uh, industrial park project is the executive, wait, he's the uh, governing board director of the St. John's River Water Management District, John Miklos. He's, he owns Biotech, which is in the business of procuring permits from water management districts, etc. So that's who's running the show here. So you can, okay, so my, it seems like I turn around and we see CE, uh, conservation easements, mitigation lands are not protected, conservation easements are not uh, protected in perpetuity. As Kimberly said, um, Florida Statute 704.06 says the parties can release the easements when they want to. They don't even have to provide a reason for said release. They could just do it. That's our law. That needs to be changed. By the way, in the business contractors park, which I think is super egregious, okay, 30 acres, they just ripped it off, didn't even give a reason. Nobody asked for a reason. Um, See, there's subsection four. Conservation easement may be released by the holder of the easement to the hold, from, by the holder to the hold, holder of the fee. Um, and so the water management districts did have a rule for a while saying if the water management district is a grantee of an easement, a conservation easement, that was put on there as for to serve as an the mitigation for granting a permit to tear up wetlands or some property somewhere else used to be illegal, unlawful. They repealed that law. They can, they are releasing easements all over the place. Okay, next screen. Most interesting to me, and this is kind of where split out comes in. The Army Corps and the EPA recognized about 20 years ago that mitigation is a joke. Okay. Developers will promise you the moon and the stars. And then as soon as they get the permit, the mitigation obligations are not fulfilled. This is just uh, uh, the uh, National Academy of Sciences wrote, wrote several reports up on this. On this. Um, so about <coughs> 10 or 12 years ago, the Army Corps and the EPA tightened up on mitigation requirements and said that mitigation obligations are mm, commitments made as part of the Army decision uh, 
legally binding and must be accomplished as the project is implemented. Legally binding. I think that is the only thing stopping Ridge Road going through uh, uh, the Saranova Preserve right now. Because legally binding and must be accomplished as the project is implemented. Because the the permit that was issued by the Army Corps to uh, build the uh, the Suncoast Park Big One said that the um, Saranova would be protected. It was one coherent piece would be protected um, as one piece. There was no mention of a road going through it. And I honestly think that's really the only thing that has um, halted this four and six lane highway going through this uh, this property. Um, Interestingly, these rules have not been litigated or challenged. They've been sitting on the books. Um, and we'll see. You know, the Ridge Road extension, Pasco just went on the news the other night and said, we're, we're going to make a final push. We know we're going to get it this time. Um, they've hired $500 an hour consultants to push it through up in Washington. But we'll see. We will see. Um, I know that the Army Corps and the federal agencies are loath to say just no to a permit application, to say no. Um, so what else? Um, what do we think needs to be done? Well, we need to tighten up on the Florida statutes, governing conservation easements. Um, I think that nonprofit third parties should be grantees of conservation easements, not uh, state agencies like the water management districts, etc., that are just subject to politics, right? They can't say no to the politics, the power of the politics. Um, hmm. Yeah, our ask. This is all of our problem, Valerie says. Yeah, you know, there's gopher tortoises in Split Oak Forest. There's gopher tortoises all over uh, the Farms and Mitigation Bank. There's gopher tortoises in the Saranova. These are just the ones that I'm intimately familiar with. We need the Gopher Tortoise Council to um, take a position on this and say that, you know, we need to step it up and make in perpetuity mean uh, forever, not just until a new development deal comes around. Thank you.